depending on where you are. My name is Steve Sang. I am director of the China Institute at SOAS. Let me welcome you all to this webinar on the politics of expert, expertise in China. And we have an excellent speaker from China itself to take on this very important subject. And the speaker is Professor uh, Xu Feng Zhu, who is a professor at Tsinghua University, where he also serves as, among other positions, the Executive Associate Dean at the School of Public Policy and Management, and as director of his own think tank, is also the executive director of the Institute for Sustainable Development Goals there. He has a wide ranging interest for research, which includes public policy theories, science and technology policy, environment and climate change, as well as governance in transitional China. Perhaps one could say that he is interested in nearly all the very important hot button subjects that China will have to be dealing with that we will all be interested in knowing more. He is very widely published, uh, both in terms of leading academic journals, as well as in terms of books. He is the author of five books, and I will mention only the most recent two books. And they are The Politics of Expertise in China, which came out in 2019, which I think is the uh, underpins the talk that he is going to give to us today. The other one is the politic, uh, is Reform and Openings and Contemporary Think Tanks in China, which was released a year earlier in 2018 in Chinese. With that, let me hand over to Professor Zhu, but before Professor Zhu uh, starts his presentation, just let me remind you that this uh, event will be recorded. And if you would like to ask any questions or make any comment, please use the Q&A box function at the uh, bottom right-hand side of your screen. When you raise a question if you would like to raise it anonymously you are welcomed to do so but even then please provide information about yourself so that i can uh, pick and choose the questions more effectively but your wish for anonymity will be respected and after the uh, webinar today all questions and comments will be forwarded to the speaker after the event. So even if questions that are not being picked because of time pressure, they will still be put to the speaker. Now with that, Professor Zhu, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Stephen Chang, and uh, thank you for the, all the audience. Uh, and uh, thank uh, the uh, Soil, Soil China Institute uh, for inviting me uh, for this lecture. Uh, actually, uh, uh, this institute, uh, I published an article uh, in China Quarterly on China think tanks. I, I know the China Quarterly is the uh, uh, most uh, famous uh, China study journal uh, in the world. Um, very honored to uh, be one of the author uh, of the journal. So, uh, and also today is the very special day because uh, today is the Valentine's Day. So I, we, uh, when we uh, set this uh, lecture, I didn't realize that today is the, the uh, Valentine's Day and uh, happy uh, holiday. And also, especially for audience from, chi uh, from China and from Asia countries, because uh, uh, this is evening of the romantic uh, day, so uh, you are true love of the uh, academic research. So uh, I'm very thanks for your coming. Uh, now let me share my screen. Uh, 
So, okay, today's talk, I would like to talk about the uh, one of my books as uh, Professor Tom said, uh, the politics of expertise in China. Uh, first, uh, uh, let me introduce some of my publications. Uh, in, 19, uh, in 2009, uh, 2009, I published my first book uh, in Chinese, uh, the China Think Tanks, the inference uh, in the policy process. And uh, three years later, I published an English uh, book, The Rise of Think Tanks in China. Both uh, the book, I uh, conducted national questionnaire survey on China's think tanks to explore why they are rise and uh, uh, why they how to uh, how how to uh, achieve inference in the policy process in China, and then uh, we did some case studies uh, and uh, we uh, I, I I published a book about the public uh, expert participation in policy changes and the right one is the. Uh, uh, the right one is the Korean uh, version of this Chinese book. And then uh, after I updated my cases and the theories, I published this, uh, this book, uh, Politics of the Expertise in China. Um, uh, in this book, I explore four behavioral strategies of experts of China. And uh, we use uh, four cases, comparative cases to demonstrate different cases, different behavioral patterns of uh, Chinese experts in different scenario, different policy, case, uh, policy change cases. And then uh, this is the, my recent book, uh, which one is uh, the uh, uh, Chinese version and the English version. The English version uh, uh, is to be uh, published in 2022. Uh, the reform and opening up and the think tanks in contemporary China, uh, published by Renmin University. So uh, today's talk, I would like to uh, talk some uh, theoretical uh, introduction, and uh, I will uh, 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 introduce uh, three cases. Uh, two of the cases are from my book, uh, the new type of rural cooperative medical care system and the new uh, urban medical care system these two policy cases. And then the, the, the third one is uh, uh, the newly, uh, newly uh, studied cases, expert in COVID-19, which one is uh, uh, I first uh, uh, introduced. And then we discuss some uh, comparisons and uh, theoretical thinkings. So uh, let's uh, introduce. So uh, this picture is the map of the policy process. You know, what, what do you mean by the policy process? Pro policy process is uh, the why and the how a policy was analyzed and designed. And uh, uh, there are different stages of policy process. For example, from the beginning is problem definition. So what kind of problem happened? And then we define this uh, problem. And then initiating uh, agenda. Uh, policy agenda and then set the policy goals and uh, policy instruments and uh, implementation and then policy evaluation. So there are different types of policy uh, actors uh, within central government and the local government and also social system. In the, uh, in the central uh, system, like uh, uh, in China, like central government, like the state council, the national people's congress and the superior uh, people's court and the parties and so on. And in local system, like local governments, local people's congress and the central local relations are all factors uh, uh, related with the policy process. And uh, in this talk, I would like to talk the social system, the expert or think tanks uh, that participated in policy process. And also there are other actors like uh, mass medias, entrepreneurs or enterprises and the social organizations and even citizens, they can be active actors for the public policy. So uh, uh, we talked experts. What are experts? Experts are special policy maker, policy making participants 
who use their expertise to influence the decision-making process. They are not mass media, they are not enterprises, they are not uh, NGOs. So they, have their, they only have the resources or uh, expertise and they are neutral. They are, they, what they are doing is not uh, like lobbying or so, and so on. They just uh, give the expert, expertise and advices to the uh, decision makers. And the uh, experts include the scientists, engineers, social science researchers, or think tankers, and the lawyers, and the, uh, other practitioners. And also, uh, Chinese experts are playing increasingly more important roles uh, in policy, uh, policy changes with various behavioral strategies. And in this seminar, uh, cases will be introduced to illustrate the different patterns of behavioral strategies of uh, Chinese experts. So uh, our question is, uh, first, uh, expert involvement uh, is usually regarded as one of the causes of the policy changes. A lot of uh, researchers uh, uh, focus the, on how uh, policy change was influenced by experts. Uh, however, uh, we don't know how does the nature of policy changes in turn influence behavioral strategies and the patterns of expert involvement. That's the reverse question, which uh, we put expert involvement as dependent variable and the policy change the nature of policy changes as independent variables. After over four decades of imp implementing reform and uh, uh, since the end of 1970, uh, what are the behavioral strategies uh, uh, or patterns uh, of Chinese experts in the current decision-making system in mainland China? And why do Chinese experts tend to use different behavioral strategies in different policy change processes? So that's uh, our question today. So let's uh, talk about the uh, structure of the decision-making authority uh, at the central level in China. Uh, as we know, there are different tiers of the uh, decision makers. Uh, the first tier is the top leadership uh, in, in the Chinese system. Uh, like uh, top 25 to 35 leaders, preeminent leaders, elders, and uh, generalists, and then super ministerial units. When some policies and the decisions are comprehensive enough uh, related with different ministries, uh, the, the government will organize the super ministerial units to coordinate different opinions and the interests of ministries like uh, leading small groups and the party department, uh, party depart uh, departments and the special committees to, uh, to organize and uh, to communicate, uh, communicate uh, and uh, uh, coordinate uh, uh, all the comprehensive policy issues. And then the minist ministries like uh, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Science and Technology and uh, National Development Reform Commission, NDRC. They are ministerial level decision makers. And then departments like bureaus and departments under the ministries. So uh, what are experts in our theory? Uh, the theory is the nature of the policy change and the behavioral strategy of experts. So first we assume that experts are neutral, interests are neutral. So if they are not they, if they are not neutral, they are stakeholders. So we don't know what are uh, they talk about because of their expertise or or their personal interests. So if they are not neutral, they are not expertise uh, experts at all. They may they may be the uh, one of the members of the interest group. And the general speaking, Chinese experts favor directly influencing uh, decision makers rather than resort to the public opinion. Often experts decided to publicize their opinion uh, because they are unsuccessful through direct channel to the decision makers. Therefore, they leverage public opinion to oppose their influence. Uh, so 
um, so the model, uh, we have the two nature, two characteristics of the policy changes. The one is the loss in readiness, the other is knowledge complexity. Uh, uh, we, we will talk later, but, but uh, we, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, noted that the policy changes have directions, which means different directions, we have different stakeholders. And the policy A change to policy B or policy A change to policy C may have totally different uh, stakeholders and the beneficiaries and the losers because of different directions of policy changes. So let's uh, elaborate a different uh, concept of the characteristics of the uh, policy changes. The first one is the loss in badness. The basic meaning of expert, uh, basic meaning of the um, uh, embeddedness refers to whether a certain policy participant is a member of a key policy network. So the concept of loss embeddedness in the policy change refers to whether or not the stakeholder are closely tied to decision makers. And also they are potential embedded losers in the direction of the policy change. That is a very complicated concept. So I would like to uh, elaborate the concept. First, the stakeholders, there are different kinds of stakeholders. We can, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can classify the two by three, six types of stakeholders uh, with potential interest and embeddedness in the network of policy makers. Uh, there are different types different kind of uh, potential interests, potential loss, potential benefits or neutral. And then uh, if someone is within the network of policy maker, uh, so we call the strong indebtedness. And uh, if they are outside of the policy making networks, they are weak indebtedness. So therefore there are uh, six types of uh, policy actors. So we, we say that only embedded losers, they have willingness and ability to resist policy change. You know, other kind of policy actors, neutral, they, they have uh, uh, indifference with this policy. And the embedded, and lose, embedded and winners, they are winners, so they will not resist the policy change. And then no embedded losers, winners, and neutral participants. They, even though they want to resist the policy change, they have no ability, enough ability to resist the policy change because they are outside the policy networks. So we can talk about uh, the different uh, scenarios. For strong, loose embeddedness, the suffering stakeholders is able to express objectives, uh, ob objection uh, to the policy maker and uh, prevent the further development of the policy change. Therefore, when the loose embeddedness of an expert uh, supported the policy change direction is strong, the uh, relevant losers uh, in the policy network have ability to find various ways uh, to prevent expert suggestion from coming into play. Under such circumstances, experts have to resort uh, to indirect channel to initiate and uh, pro uh, pro uh, promote the policy agenda. Uh, um, different, uh, in the contract, policy change will be successful, successfully uh, accepted by the stakeholders in the policy network or the stakeholders are un unable to prevent the policy change from de uh, developing further. So when the loser loss in badness of the expert uh, supporting the policy change is weak, the expert uh, policy change are free from uh, much interference uh, from embedded members of policy, uh, policy network or in some cases, uh, even win the support of the process network members. So that's the first uh, 
theory, uh, first uh, dimension. The other dimension is knowledge complexity. Knowledge complexity in policy change refers the extent to which decision makers lack to lack the professional knowledge required by the making and understand their policy change. There are different experts of the as aspects of the uh, knowledge complexity, like uh, professionality, ambiguity, uh, originality, and uh, information asymmetry. So we can talk about the theory of uh, knowledge uh, complexity. A policy with higher knowledge complexity means that, means that decision makers require uh, more professional knowledge from experts when they select policy alternatives. Uh, commercially, if a policy change has lower uh, uh, knowledge expert, uh, non, uh, lower complexity, knowledge complexity, decision makers can uh, likely make uh, uh, a decision maker by themselves. In this case, experts are unnecessary. So with these two dimensions, we can uh, uh, build a two by two model to uh, explore behavioral strategies of experts. There are two dimensions. The one is loss embeddedness, another one is knowledge complexity. Uh, when knowledge embeddedness is weak and the knowledge complexity is high, so the experts can easily influence the decision makers through direct channels because they are welcome, you know. So the behavioral strategy is linear access. This is the basic behavioral strategy of expert consultation. However, if the loss embeddedness is strong, uh, which means uh, there are internal resistance from the uh, decision-making network, and also the uh, knowledge complexity is high, so the expert uh, will meet resistance from the system. They cannot very easily to influence the policymaker uh, from direct channels. Therefore, they have to uh, leverage a policy, uh, public opinion in mass media to, to initiate a policy agenda. And also, uh, because of the knowledge complexity, the decision makers still need the experts to, uh, to give them as, uh, expertise and advice. Therefore, after the policy agenda was set, the policies, uh, policy makers will still invite experts to give some advice. Therefore, the outside in enlightenment uh, is, there, uh, is this kind of uh, behavioral strategies. And the third one is loss embeddedness is weak and the knowledge complexity is low. So actually this is uh, the, uh, the uh, policy makers are not interested in inviting experts because the knowledge complexity is low. So when the policy uh, experts want to, uh, want to uh, influence the policies, they can raise the civic activism to initiate the, the uh, public opinion and then to uh, push the policy change. However, finally, uh, if the loss embeddedness is strong and the knowledge and the knowledge and the knowledge uh, knowledge uh, sorry uh, uh, core uh, and the knowledge uh, complexity is low so the uh, experts are not welcome so the model is locked out so this is our um, model. So because of the limitation, time limitation, I can only uh, propose, uh, I can only uh, introduce two, uh, uh, two cases. So, so let me talk uh, cases. The first case is, uh, uh, three, there are three cases. Uh, the first is new type rural cooperative medical care system. Uh, Uh, the second is new urban medical care system. The final one uh, is a newly one is expert in COVID-19. All these three cases are, uh, are medical care, uh, public health uh, related policies. 
decision makers. We, so we can uh, compare with each other. So uh, first is uh, like uh, the uh, promotion of new type of rural cooperative medical care system. Traditional rural cooperative medical care system began to decline uh, after the uh, implementation of reform and the opening up uh, in the late uh, 1970s. Uh, by the end of 80s, uh, only 4.8% of all villages in the country uh, still practice the cooperative medical care system. And uh, uh, in May uh, 1997, the State Council approved and uh, forwarded the development and the optimization of a rural cooperative medical care system. However, because of the lack of financial support from the central government, the rural cooperative medical care system uh, failed uh, through the end. So the situation improved remark remarkably when the new type of uh, nationwide the rural corporate uh, rural uh, pilot cooperative medical care system was put into operation after the decision of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council on further strengthening the public health work in rural area in 2002. So uh, and after that, the opinion of established the new rural cooperative medical care system forwarded by the central office of the state council were promulgated in 2003. This policy, uh, the central government would provide a 10 RMB subsidy available to people in rural areas uh, to each uh, farmers who participated in the new type Cooperative medical care system in central uh, in central and the rural uh, in central and the western country, uh, western China. Sorry, and uh, how how and the expert what's the expert behavior of the uh, uh, in 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 the policy change cases? Um, promoting the new type of rural cooperative medical insurance uh, cooperative medical system involved a uh, lot of many government uh, uh, government departments and uh, like ministry ministries but in general the promotion was beneficiary to ministry of health because of the system provide access to the an numerous amount of financial funds and why other ministries and the commissions were little interested in it. Therefore, uh, we can see the Ministry of Health are very interested in to promote this, uh, this policy. And a series of rural cooperative medical care system practiced and experiments uh, organized uh, jointly by international organizations and a domestic research institute uh, convinced that central government uh, uh, that the fully scaled implementation of such a system would be impossible without financial input from the government. So we can find uh, uh, one clue on how expert activities influence the government decision from the uh, re uh, re uh, collections of expert participation uh, in these programs. In 2001, the Asia Development Bank engaged Harvard University Public Health School to study a public health security issue in China's rural area. And in July 2001, the National NDRC held an international symposium in Beijing. And a report submitted to the meeting by three members of the research project, Harvard University, uh, Liu Yuanli from Harvard University, uh, Harvard Public School, Health, Health School, and uh, Rao Keqing from the Health Statistics and the Information Center of the Ministry of Health, and uh, Hu Shanlian, Public Health School in Fudan University, suggested that family bankruptcies due to uh, medical expenses, expenses amount for one third of the rural poverty. So this this number is very serious. So this report was noticed by the then 
Minister of Health, Zhang Wenkang. And Zhang Wenkang approached Rao Keqing. As, as we know, Rao Keqing is the think tanker under the Ministry of Health. So Rao Keqing and, uh, asked him to write a short report. Uh, Zhang Wenkang, the minister, Zhang Wenkang sent the, uh, in a private envelope to the, uh, to the, like, uh, uh, the then Chinese president, Jiang Zemin. And Jiang was shocked and immediately demanded to verification of the report because at first the, he didn't uh, believe that the number. So several days later, two researchers from the policy research office of the CPC Central Committee interviewed the Lao Keqing and asked him regarding the details and the data resources of the research. And uh, in November 2001, the Economic uh, 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 Structuring Office of the State Council uh, was officially charged by the research on the coordinated uh, development of a new rural health policy in the country. So in 2002, uh, driven by the Ministry of Health, uh, China's first national conference on rural health care in Chinese modern history was held in Beijing. So in this, actually, this case, uh, experts are successfully to put uh, and influence the policy and the decision makers uh, to uh, promote the new policies. The lessons from the expert behaviors, first is uh, to promote or provide a feasible solution uh, to complicated issues. The feasible solution is 10 RMB per person. So very feasible, very simple, but uh, the whole scenario, whole policy was very complicated involving 14 ministries and uh, sent an internal report to senior leaders through main government agencies. So senior leader was uh, the president and uh, through the Ministry of uh, Health. And uh, also, of course, as we know, uh, at that time, Zhang Wenkang was uh, the uh, private uh, doctor of uh, uh, president. Therefore, they have personal connections between president and the ministry, Minister of Health. And then not immediately publish the research findings contained this report to the public. So this is their step strategy. So uh, after that, uh, the uh, after the new policy uh, was promulgated, the Ministry of Health established two uh, two teams, two think tanks. The one is technical direction team in two thousand three, and then upgraded to the new type rural cooperative medical care system center, uh, research center in 2005. Okay, case two. New urban medical care system. Uh, from the beginning in 2017, uh, in, two, uh, in 1997, um, the, uh, the direction of the Central Committee of CPC and the State Council on Health Reform and the Development was promulgated to begin a full-scale market-oriented reform uh, of their existing medical and health system. And in uh, 2000, in, in the year of 2000, the State Council released a guiding, guiding uh, opinions on reform of the urban medical and health system with the objectives of establishing an urban medical and health system that meets the requirements of a socialist market economy. So what do you mean by the, the requirement of the socialist market economy? Because from the beginning, uh, before 1997, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, urban medical care system, the key issue is uh, how to reform the public hospitals. Because at that time, uh, hospitals are sponsored by the government. So the doctors have no sense to serve the hospital, uh, to serve the, uh, to give uh, services to the patients. Therefore, the unavailability of the uh, hosp uh, hospitals or public medical services are main issues of the uh, traditional uh, urban medical care system. Therefore, uh, the reform of the uh, market economy means that 
uh, put the public hospitals to the market and the public, public finance cut the support uh, to the public uh, hospitals and let the public uh, hospitals uh, to compete with each other in the market. After the reform, the situation increasingly deteriorated. The public suffered from increasingly unavailability. This is a traditional issue and the unaffordability of the medical services. From the beginning, uh, the public only suffered from unavailability, but the, 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 the price of the hospital is low, was low. But uh, after reform, unavailability is still there, but the unaffordability comes true. So in 2005, the research project on China's medical and uh, health system reform was led by Ge Yanfeng, uh, the researcher of uh, the DRC of the uh, Re uh, Development Research Center of the State Council. The report uh, uh, find that the reform, the health public urban public health reform was basically unsuccessful. In the beginning, the, re uh, the research project published eight specific reports and uh, one general report. Uh, in an internal publication of the DRC uh, in March 2005. And this publication, however, did not draw any attention of the de decision maker, makers because such conclusions match uh, an opposing voice from within the government. Uh, let's guess who will oppose this, uh, uh, this policy. Uh, proposals or recommendations. Obviously, uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, they don't like this policy research, you know, because uh, they this research uh, publicly criticized the policy that was in charge by the Ministry of Health. So, Ge, Ge Yanfeng released Finally, Ge Yanfeng released the, uh, uh, the research findings to the mass media in July 2005, and immediately triggering the outburst of public opinion. The Ministry of Health attempted to dodge uh, the general concern of the public, but uh, it's only invite uh, more criticism. And uh, uh, nine months later, uh, in 2006, the State Council decided to launch a new round of urban medical and health system reforms by initiating a policy-making uh, agenda. Uh, two months later, the State Council permitted uh, 14 ministries and the commissions to organize to form an inter-ministry coordinated working small group for the deepening of the medical and the health system reform, uh, which I just mentioned, super ministerial level organization to coordinate this reform. Uh, because this, uh, uh, this policy is still very complicated. So the government uh, desperately needed to rely on expert advice. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, in October uh, of 2000, uh, 2006, the Political Bureau of CPC Central Committee invited uh, Professor Li Ling and the uh, Deputy Director of the China Center for Economic Research of Peking University, and Professor Liu Jun, then Vice President of the China, Chinese Medical Doctors Association, to deliver lectures to the members of bureaus, Bureau uh, on foreign medical and health systems and uh, on the development of the China's medical and health services. So after that, in general, January uh, 2007, the health reform, system reform and uh, working small group decided uh, to engage seven domestic and uh, foreign research institutes, including Peking University, Fudan, Fudan University, the DRC, uh, the World Health Organization, McKinsey and the Company, and the, the World Bank 
to conduct independent and parallel design projects for health system reform reforms. Later on, Tsinghua University, Beijing U uh, Normal University, Renmin University of China joined the design work and totally nine formulated plans and compete with each other. So in late, nine, uh, in late May of the same year, the nine independent health uh, system reform plans were evaluated by the city council or by the small working small group. And uh, uh, in February 2008, a 10th uh, plan was submitted to the state council, formulated by the medical and the health experts of the Division of Biolog uh, Biology and uh, Medicine of the Chinese Academic of Sciences, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So all these plans share the same objectives uh, of the providing safe, effective, convenient, and uh, uh, affordable medical and health services uh, for the public and uh, uh, effective, effectively mitigating the problem of the unavailability and the unaffordability of the medical system. So the objective and the policy goals are the same, but uh, the policy instruments are different. The expert opinions were roughly invited, uh, divided uh, into two categories. One is a supply side, supplier side, uh, national, nationwide uh, basic uh, medical security system. Another is user side, uh, nation, nationwide service medical insurance system. These two sy systems uh, are, with, are with different logics. The first is supplier side, means uh, uh, the uh, government sponsored public health, public health and public uh, hospital system. So the public financial resources support uh, support the uh, public hospitals, uh, then lower the price of the uh, medical and the health services. And the other uh, side, and uh, uh, the other uh, policy recommendation is uh, user side, which uh, means uh, the, the patients, uh, the patient users are patients. Patients uh, go to the market and uh, to select uh, the hospitals. Hospitals are compete, competing with each other in the market, and the price may be high, but the uh, the, uh, the government resource, government fiscal resources subsidize the, the insurance system to let the uh, uh, let the patients to can reimburse their uh, price of the public health uh, from their insurance system. So these are the two different uh, policy alternatives. Finally, when the state council uh, published the uh, medical and the health system reform plan, uh, it turns out to, to be a mix of the two categories based on the input of experts and the general public. So uh, in, in, uh, in Chinese term, it's yes, uh, uh, yes, a combination of, combination of supplier side and uh, 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 user side, gong shu jian gu, in the term of the uh, official document. And uh, then uh, the state council and the uh, uh, CPC, uh, state, uh, central committee and the state council released the opinion on deepening the uh, healthcare system reform and the implementation plan of the recent priorities of the healthcare system reform in 2009 to 2011. So this is the uh, two cases from my book. Uh, so we can see, uh, compare these two cases. The first is, uh, the first is uh, like uh, uh, who, who are the experts and also uh, experts position in the implementation of new type rural cooperative medical care system. Uh, uh, the expert position is, to increase government investment and expand the coverage of the uh, rural cooperative medical care system. And then uh, at the stage of agenda setting, influence 
decision-making process through direct channel without immediately publicizing research uh, findings. And then the ministry uh, at the alternative selection, Ministry of Health set up a, a technical direction team and a research center uh, for the policy. And uh, for the policy of new urban medical and the rural, uh, urban uh, medical and the health care system, the expert positions are uh, or uh, to reform the existing uh, medical care system uh, to make uh, medical services more accessible, available, and affordable to the general public. Uh, from the beginning, the, uh, the expert publicized the publicized the research findings after direct channel failed. So then uh, experts are invited, uh, nine plus one uh, projects teams are invited to uh, give uh, advice to the decision makers and they compete with each other uh, to persuade the final, final decision makers. So they, they are different. We can see the logic is the one is uh, uh, who like this uh, policy pro proposal. Uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, from the first uh, case, Ministry of Health liked this uh, policy. So they can only, uh, the experts can only need only uh, uh, use the direct channel to influence the policy. However, the second uh, policy, in the second policies, the Ministry of Health uh, didn't like this policy and uh, didn't like to be uh, criticized. Therefore, the, uh, the uh, experts have to publicize the research findings because internal direct channels uh, failed, even though these experts are, have very strong connections with decision makers. They are uh, DRC of state council. So uh, the, third, uh, the third case is uh, expert in COVID-19, uh, which is uh, uh, very new. So uh, let's uh, uh, reflect the, all this uh, uh, history of the uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, first, uh, we, we recall uh, the state one is uh, virus identification and the research. On December 8th, uh, uh, 2019, a delivery man from the uh, South China Seafood Market went to the Wuhan uh, Central Hospital for the first time, he had had a, a fever for three days. And nine, day late, nine days later, uh, Zhang Xiaotun, deputy director of imaging uh, department of the Zhongnan Hospital in Wuhan, observed the, the patient CT, uh, uh, give and have a judgment, seems like a source. So he took the uh, very seriously. And uh, uh, several days later, in, on December, uh, 31st, the first group of experts from the National Health Commission arrived uh, in Wuhan. And on the same day, Wuhan Health Commission reported the unknown pneumonia for the first time. And uh, uh, in January, in January uh, 3rd, in 2020, uh, the, uh, China informed the uh, WHO, US, and other relevant countries and the regional organizations of the epidemic information. So this is the first stage. And uh, what the uh, uh, scientists do, because Wuhan's Virus Research Institute, uh, they actively and quickly respond to the uh, epidemic and uh, to the uh, epidemic and uh, started to research on the virus. Uh, on January 2nd, 2020, the whole uh, genome uh, sequence of the uh, novel coronavirus was confirmed. And uh, three days later, the virus strain was isolated. And four days later, put the virus uh, into national virus database, standardized uh, uh, storage complete. And two days later, the virus sequence was submitted to the WHO. So uh, let's compare the 17 years ago uh, during the SARS. The uh, expert and the scientists in all over the world 
spent four months to get the genome sequence of the SARS uh, coronavirus. So currently we have only days. So we can see the development of Chinese uh, uh, medical research abilities very promoted, improved. And also because of the virus sequence uh, submitted to the world, WHO, so uh, many uh, foreign countries started to research vaccines before the further case of their uh, own country. So that's the uh, contribution of the Chinese uh, scientists. And also uh, on February 7, uh, 11th, uh, Director General of WHO announced the press uh, at the press conference that the new coronavirus uh, named uh, COVID-19. Then we can see uh, some kind of uh, academic research she, uh, in, uh, in March, Tsinghua Net collected more than 1,000 uh, uh, COVID-19 related papers, published different journals and uh, academic platforms, uh, including Science, Nature, and the Lesson. Uh, so uh, the statistics uh, results show that because from the beginning of the pandemic, Chinese researchers contributed the most uh, papers with total 412 papers and uh, 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 followed by uh, US uh, two, uh, 223 and the, the UK, uh, the 60, 67 papers. And uh, some key uh, uh, scientists' uh, contribution. Stage two is, uh, stage one is identification of the virus. And the stage two is uh, we got to know uh, what happened and uh, what is the emergency plan and the isolation approach. So on uh, January 20th, uh, Zhong Nanshan first announced that the news of the human to human transmission, because uh, at that time, uh, we firstly know that the virus uh, can transmit, transmit the human to human. And uh, uh, three days later, uh, at uh, 10 a.m., uh, January 23rd, Wuhan was closed and blocked. Uh, one night before uh, the midnight, uh, January, January, January uh, 20, uh, 22nd, Li Lanjuan, uh, Professor Li Lanjuan, uh, the academic of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, uh, reported uh, based on the epidemic situation, Wuhan must be closely, in, uh, must be uh, closed immediately. He reported to the central government. Uh, government. Of course, uh, uh, this uh, proposal and the recommendation was not the only reason that the Chinese central government and the provincial government decided to close Wuhan. But uh, uh, she, she, she dared to report uh, and dared to say uh, her true thinking. And also uh, on February 3rd, uh, according to the suggestion of Wang Chen, Wang Chen is the president of Peking Union uh, Medical College. Uh, uh, he, he proposed a suggestion to uh, construct a mobile cabin hospital. Uh, uh, and uh, this, this suggestion was very successful. They use museum and uh, uh, like uh, uh, public buildings uh, to, to to be a constructor, the mobile cabins. So these suggestions were learned by many countries afterward. So uh, later, uh, in early days of ep epidemic, the National Health Commission set up a con uh, expert group according to the policy. The National General em Emergency Plan of the Public Emergencies. Uh, after SARS, uh, updated after SARS. So they organized uh, uh, the expert group. 59 uh, experts were included, led by uh, Liang, Wen, Liang, Liang, Man, Liang Man Yan, uh, uh, who is the, the director of the Institutional Reform Department of the National Health Commission. So within all these experts in the group, most of them are a, a medical field. Uh, like uh, respiration, uh, 
uh, severe diseases, infections, and so on. But there are also some kind of uh, some social science professions uh, professionals, like um, management, like Xue Lan, Professor Xue Lan, and Professor Fen Dongchao from Tsinghua University, from our school, School of Public Policy and Management. Um, and the economics, uh, Liu, Gu, uh, Liu Guo En uh, from Peking University and uh, from law, medical law, uh, uh, from uh, the Tsinghua Law School, uh, Wang En, Wang Chen Guang. And another stage is uh, science communication to the public and the to doctors, because uh, uh, at that time, only very few scientists and experts know what happened uh, about the coronavirus, you know. So they must publicize what happened and uh, how to treat and how to identify this, uh, uh, this you know, uh, pneumonia. So uh, from the very beginning of the epidemic, the central steering, steering group pulled expert resources to provide whole chain guidelines to prevention, control, diagnose, and uh, treatment of the uh, COVID-19. And uh, on, at that time, they uh, at that time uh, the CDC uh, helped write uh, public prevention guidelines issued by the National Health Commission. And from February to March, the National COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen medical treatment team wrote uh, and repeatedly revised the COVID nineteen diagnosis and treatment plan. Totally seven version uh, up to up to now, and issued by the uh, General Office of National um, Health Commission and uh, Office of National Administrative and Traditional Chinese Medicine. So, and also uh, the uh, medical, uh, the uh, the uh, National Health Commission organized a lot of doctors and experts to jointly wrote the uh, write the the consensus of expert of personal protection in different regions of medical in institu uh, institutions during the COVID nineteen epidemic. So actually, they just. Uh, teach and uh, communicate with uh, doctors and the uh, general public to prevent themselves and uh, to diagnose and uh, treat the, uh, the virus. And also another, another case is Zhang Menhong, who is very famous now. Uh, 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 he is uh, an outstanding representative of science communication. He did a lot of uh, uh, public uh, communication and uh, public lectures and uh, meetings uh, 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 to the public and uh, to other peers, uh, peer uh, experts to discuss how to protect and uh, how to prevent and control the COVID-19. Uh, for example, in, on, in February, the electric uh, version of Professor Zhang's advice on COVID-19 prevention and uh, control was launched. And also, uh, John made the first speech, public speech, uh, on fighting COVID-19, um, uh, entitled uh, the uh, the how to how how human beings combat the uh, effective uh, diseases. And also, uh, John actually John is not only only for. Uh, public communication, but he is the leader of Shanghai COVID-19 medical treatment team. So others, they, uh, he give, gave lectures and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, educated people uh, or persuade, appeal the public to get a vaccine uh, for the, uh, for, for, for the COVID-19. And also uh, science communication uh, to foreign experts. So because uh, uh, till May uh, 2020, uh, Chinese epidemic situation has been controlled. So there are there were a lot of experience uh, uh, that uh, should be uh, uh, shared to the international experts because uh, uh, in May, uh, in, in, in April and May, the COVID-19 began spread in different countries. So Zhong Nanshan, Qiao Jie, Zhang Wenhong, and other medical experts attended an inter uh, online meeting to introduce Chinese experts 
uh, Chinese uh, experience uh, in fighting epidemic in English. At that time, Chinese uh, public, general public get, got to know these scientists are very good at English. So because of these uh, webinars are uh, online uh, to the public. And also, uh, for example, uh, another case is Zhong Nan San deliver uh, a, a video speech for an international conference, uh, for in, an international conference uh, to introduce Chinese uh, experience and the Chinese vaccines and also some uh, Delta variant and so on. And for us, like public management, management expert, because uh, this is not only for uh, medical uh, policy decision making, but also there's a lot of other public decision makings like uh, emergency, like public health reform and so on. And, uh, and the poverty's uh, job and uh, economic uh, uh, stimulation and so on. So uh, at that time, public and uh, uh, policy experts uh, actively uh, involved in uh, policy advising. So, uh, for example, uh, in our school, uh, more than 100 policy, policy, policy reports on anti-epidemic measures have been submitted to, uh, to the central government and the departments uh, from a lot of expert and policy expertise. And also in Peking, Peking University, there are also some kind of policy suggestions and seminars. And a lot of uh, public man management experts actively uh, did a lot of policy research uh, during the pandemic. And also uh, we, uh, we uh, um, summarize the uh, experience of Chinese, measure, Chinese measures and the message and uh, publicize this uh, uh, experience in English and in Chinese to introduce the experience to the world. So the Institute for Contemporary China Study and the Peking University School of Health Policy and Management posted a release, the China fight against the COVID-19 and then released in both in Chinese and English. Uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, economic experts, uh, because uh, at that time, you know, business are closed and a uh, lot of uh, employment and so on. Uh, the, the economic economy is, was uh, deteriorated. So uh, one uh, economic uh, expert sees the opportunity uh, to promote and policies. Uh, one case is uh, Ren, Zhe, uh, Ren Zheping. Uh, Ren is one of the first economists to advocate new type infrastructure construction. So uh, this term is not new, was not new. Uh, in uh, 2018, the Central Economic Working Con Work Conference redefined the new type of the infrastructure construction as 5G, AI, industry, in, in internet, and the internet of things. Later, strengthen the development of new next generation information uh, infrastructure was included uh, uh, in the government working uh, report in 2019. However, however um, uh, for more than one year, neither the concept of the uh, NTIC nor its contents appear to the official language and the documents. So Ren Zheping, uh, because uh, of during the epidemic, traditional industry was greatly impacted. And uh, however, the internet industry had a very big, big trend. So meanwhile, consuming demand was declining and uh, while the economic growth need to turn to investment of, uh, for new opportunity. Therefore, Ren Zheping's team started to market this uh, concept of new type infrastructure construction again. So he published uh, two recommendations, policy recommendations, analysis and the policy recommendation on the impact of COVID-19 on China's economy. And uh, it's time to launch new type infrastructure building. Both reports refer to the 
concept and uh, generated generated a very big uh, considerable uh, response of the public. And then uh, uh, from February to March, the CPC Central Committee mentioned the concept again. And uh, the uh, new type of new uh, infrastructure uh, com uh, construction policy was decided by the National People's Congress National Meeting in May 2020. Uh, 20, uh, uh, 20, 2020. And also another case is uh, Fan, Gang, uh, Fan Gang, who is a professor, uh, economic professor. Uh, he published uh, some articles uh, in Phobos uh, that uh, the, uh, give some uh, predictions and also foster a confidence to the public. And he also uh, calling for the global cooperation. Uh, uh, so, the state four is uh, post pandemic because uh, after May, uh, after May 2020, uh, the epidemic uh, situation within China has been controlled uh, quite. Uh, so uh, we must reflect uh, how to reform our own system, especially our public health system. So the uh, President Xi Jinping present a uh, pr precise uh, uh, over a symposium with the expert and the scholars in Beijing. Experts on the symposium, symposium proposed to build a well-functioning public health system. Uh, like uh, some experts like Zhong Nanshan, uh, Tong, Zhu, Tong Zhao Hui, Zhang Boli, Li Song, Xue Lan, Yang Weizhong, Wang Chengguang, and a lot of experts are very famous. Uh, in during the uh, pandemic, and as other experts give lectures, uh, speeches respectively, and uh, to propose suggestions, a number a number of uh, policies like to improve the system and the mechanism of major epidemic prevention, the control, and so on. So after that, uh, President Xi Jinping awarded the recipients um, of national medals and the national honorable uh, titles. Zhong Nanshan was awarded the, uh, the Medal of Republic, while Zhang Boli, uh, Zhang Dingyu, and Chen Wei uh, each received the national honorable title of the People's Hero. So uh, this is the third case. Um, let's discuss, uh, very interesting because uh, First, we can compare different two doctors in China and in America. So is the chief uh, scientist of the epidemic uh, in China and uh, Tony Fauci uh, as the chief of the CTC, CDC in America. But, but they are different, uh, uh, they have different, uh, uh, totally different, uh, um, uh, experiences for public public opinion uh, in U.S. in in the U.S. the on uh, in April uh, Trump retreat with uh, like a fire fire fault, uh, and the five Trump they compete uh, in the uh, in in Twitter and the White House denied the congressional request uh, for uh, Dr. Fauci's uh, uh, testimony. And uh, in China, so, you know, uh, Zhong Nanshan was very popular. So Zhong Nanshan in uh, social media, Weibo, is very popular. And uh, official activities, uh, they, uh, he attended a lot of attendees, uh, uh, activities online. And uh, uh, Shifeng, like I think if we could sort of um, run oh, it okay. very quickly so that there's a bit of time for discussion. We have only okay. about 20 minutes left. Okay, oh, one, uh, one point, uh, okay, no problem. So uh, as we can see, they, uh, Fauci and uh, Fauci and uh, Zhong Nanshan, uh, they have different uh, uh, experiences uh, in media and uh, in uh, official. You know, uh, Zhong Nanshan uh, was awarded uh, Medical of Republic. And finally, uh, we once believe that uh, anti, uh, like a scientist and uh, uh, intellectualism was a thing in the Trump area. 
but it turns out that uh, in Biden area, uh, area area was not the rescue because uh, just uh, uh, two weeks ago, the public health uh, experts say that uh, cases uh, of new uh, Omicron variant uh, was have peak, so you must uh, have wear in peace and. Uh, but uh, the people uh, rarely uh, in Washington DC and oppose medicine and uh, uh, accuse Fauci uh, to killing pe of killing people. So this picture is, uh, you, you know, this is uh, your Fauciism, uh, like a Nazism. Okay, so let's compare different uh, like uh, uh, political situation and uh, media ecology uh, between China and uh, uh, and the uh, US, uh, very interesting. And uh, we can compare other uh, like uh, natural science and uh, social sciences uh, in China. So uh, the government and the media, they are different uh, to the government and to media. Uh, they are different uh, strategies. So the last picture, uh, the last uh, slide. So different in different stages, uh, different uh, science, scientists and the social scientists they have uh, appeared different uh, at a different stages and uh, have different uh, have different uh, uh, behavior strategies. Okay, so that's all my, my presentation. And any questions and uh, the comments are welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shu Feng, um, Professor Zhu. I am sorry that I rush you towards the end, but we do need to allow for time for discussions. Um, there are already two questions uh, in the Q&A box. I would encourage other people to put in their questions, but let me start off by asking you the first question. At the beginning, when you uh, put up your first chart in terms of this uh, organization stru organizational structure of how inference are being uh, exercised, there is no mention of the party at all. Nowhere in the charts does, does the word party exist. Now we are at a time when General Secretary Xi Jinping has made it very, very clear. Matters not whether it's North, South, East, West, or the center, or in any sphere of work, the party leads everything. So where does the party come in, in your structure? Does the party not matter at all, or does the, ma the party matters, as Xi Jinping says, that it must? Okay, uh, it is a very good question. Are you uh, mentioning this uh, picture, you know? Uh, first, the party exists in here. Pre-eliminated uh, pre uh, leaders are, you know, top 25 to 35 leaders are all party leaders like Xi Jinping, like uh, other uh, premiers are all here. So uh, this circle, uh, maybe uh, this circle is uh, like a political bureau and some editors and some uh, uh, general uh, things, uh, general uh, members. And also you, you can see this is a party department. This is uh, also party. So actually party is very important. Uh, and also, uh, in my cases, uh, if you mentioned, uh, if you notice that all the important documents, policies are released both by party central committee and the state council. You see, let me let me talk. Let me take one case. Uh, yes, you see. So this is a very important case, yes. Uh, decision of the Central Committee of the CPC. CPC means the uh, Central uh, 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 Communist Party of China and the State Council. State Council is the government and the CPC is the party. So actually, uh, party always exists exist in, 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 in the policy making system. Yes. Okay. Um... Let's get on with the questions from the uh, participants. The first question comes from our colleague, uh, Gary Swartz, Professor Swartz, who is very appreciative of your wonderful presentation. And he would like to ask you to elaborate 
your construct of knowledge complexity. He thinks it has a lot to do with Nobel laureate Herbert Simon's bounded rationality concept as it relates to the intellectual limitations of policy makers. Would you like to do that? Yeah, yeah, this is a very good question and a deep question, you know. Uh, first, um, yes. Uh, I'm okay. not hearing you. Uh, yes, uh, first, uh, let me uh, introduce my uh, basic assumption of our analysis. Uh, Gary's uh, question is related with uh, rational uh, decision making or bounded rational uh, 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 decision making, which means uh, the decision makers they have their own knowledge and they have own their own uh, calculation uh, to different uh, policy alternatives. But in my structure of uh, my research, policy makers are not are not like uh, they have they have their own interest or priorities. So they are only you know the neutral. So in the in our scenario, policy makers are like a judge uh, coordinating different uh, interest group and uh, different uh, expert suggestions. And uh, they just uh, balance and uh, to pick uh, one uh, like uh, best uh, solutions. Which means the best, not the like uh, the uh, rational or bounded rational uh, choice, but the balanced within different uh, stakeholders and uh, get uh, the uh, uh, maximized uh, support from the stakeholders. So this is a totally different scenario or uh, assumption structure of the. Uh, Simon's uh, uh, bounded rational choice or others. So within us, maybe it's more like it's um, our our analysis is more like a political uh, political uh, bureaucratic uh, system, not the rational uh, decision making system. So this is the basic assumption of our analysis. You know the uh, the. Uh, for Simon's uh, uh, for Simon's uh, uh, theory, the rational decision making means the government is a one rational decision maker. But in our research, in our analysis, the government can be divided different parts, different bureaus, bureaucracies, and also different uh, opinions stakeholders. They have different opinions. So the final decision makers who uh, release the final documents are judged. They are not the like a uh, rational choice, a uh, rational uh, decision maker. That's all my response. Okay, thank you. Next question comes from Nick Sunding from the University of Newcastle. And Nick would like to ask, well, he says that you have briefly covered China's think tanks' international roles but you mostly focus on their domestic roles. Would you mind introducing the dynamics and key drivers operating in China's think, Chinese think tanks international roles? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, actually, I'm writing an article about the, you know, the Chinese think tanks in the globalized world. So uh, uh, first uh, we must, uh, uh, separately two kind of policies. The one is uh, foreign policy, another one is domestic policy. And uh, domestic policies in so foreign policy is obvious. Uh, expert suggests some policies uh, to foreign policy decision makers, and they can play role about the international community. This is obvious. But for domestic policies. 
they are also they also have some international roles uh domestically because for example uh for example because china is now is big enough to influence uh in, in influence internationally uh with the domestic policy for example uh if you if you are expert you are an expert to who propose to 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 the central government to, to uh like uh, like uh, um uh fiscal policies or uh, monetary for policies like release uh, uh, to print more renminbi to your uh, cu currency policies uh, sometimes we call that this is a domestic policy or economic policies but obviously the currency policy or fiscal policies they have externality to other countries you know therefore Chinese experts, Chinese think tanks, even though they only focus on domestic policies, they have international impacts with that. In that scenario, they must consider the international impact when they propose a domestic policy. You know, so they must uh, consider both domestically and internationally. So this is another one. Uh, I guess your, another, your, your, your question is related to another one. It's like uh, something like uh, international communication or uh, uh, track to uh, diplomacy. So this is actually, this mean, this actually, this is something like the first category of foreign policy. Foreign policy, because uh, track two, track one part, uh, uh, diplomacy means uh, government to government diplomacy. And uh, think tank to think tank, expert to expert diplomacy means uh, expert can communicate with their peers of uh, foreign countries from foreign country and uh, communicate uh, a policy. And then they submit it to the, their personal suggestion to their own authority and let the government to meet. So this is a track two, uh, track two uh, diplomacy. So actually, I'm, what I uh, um, what I emphasize is uh, domestic policy has still impact on international community. Thank you. Okay, there's a new question that came in, which is a kind of follow up on this point about China's. Um, international roles of Chinese think tanks. And this come from um, Vivian Guo. And should like to ask you what, to share some of your insights on Chinese influence on global environmental and climate governance. More specifically, how has Chinese think tankers been able to influence the concept of, quote, ecological civilization, end of quote, and is further implementation. For example, the promotion, promotion of ecological and lining practice in the Baron Road Initiative. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vivian Guo. Uh, I, I guess you are the uh, expert or student in global um, government, uh, uh, environmental or um, and uh, climate governance. Um, actually, uh, yeah, first, uh, international uh, global uh, environmental and climate governance is one type of global governance, you know. And the global governance as one type of like uh, something like a foreign policy, but not to pure, uh, not a pure foreign policy because foreign policy is uh, in charge by the foreign minister. But uh, for for global governance, there are some expert uh, uh, specific expertise with uh, uh, some some uh, some disciplines, something like environmental governance, environmental and cl climate change issues. Uh, first, I, I suggest you to uh, uh, refer 
one um, one article published in the Journal of Contemporary China, maybe uh, three or four or five years ago, uh, and German uh, expert uh, whose name is Ab, Ab, A-B-B. Uh, he did a very wonderful uh, research on the expert of Chinese climate change, uh, which, uh, you know, there are, if you, if you know the uh, global governance, there are five expert, uh, uh, aspects of climate governance. Mitigation, uh, mitigation, something, uh, uh, mitigation, uh, uh, let me, let me remind, uh, uh, technical uh, transfer, uh, uh, capacity building, uh, mitigation, uh, uh, adaptation, and uh, financial support something, mechanism, uh, financial mechanism five. So every aspect, uh, there are a lot of different experts involving uh, in different uh, parts of the uh, climate governance in China, Chinese expert. And uh, these experts, uh, first, uh, they helped the Chinese government, especially Xie Zhenghua, who is the chief, uh, chief uh, uh, co uh, negotiator of the climate negotiator. Uh, they support the chief negotiators uh, to uh, dialogue and uh, bargain in the COP, you know, 26 or so on, Copenhagen and uh, Paris, Agreement, all the round of the uh, these uh, 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 UN climate uh, summit, uh, lot of experts are for, uh, were were followed um, uh, with uh, the um, uh, Xie Zhenghua and the, their team. So this is the maybe obviously uh, these experts are very important. Uh, Another one is uh, internally uh, and uh, domestically, because uh, uh, as we know that uh, uh, last year, uh, 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 the Chinese government uh, uh, announced uh, that the uh, 2030 and the 2060 uh, carbon peak and the carbon neutrality strategy. So a lot of things must do because uh, uh, domestically, because uh, the international commitment, uh, this is an international global governance issue, but uh, how to localize the international commitment uh, is a very big issue. So a lot of experts are researching on how to meet the commitment of the 2060 carbon neutrality strategy. So this is a huge body of the expert so this is uh, maybe the first uh, question. Another question is eco-civilization. So, uh, I mean, uh, eco-civilization is a very Chinese style concept, you know, uh, because uh, the first uh, first mentioned uh, this concept is uh, in uh, 2007, uh, 2007 in the like uh, 17, uh, 16th or 17th uh, National Congress of P CPC National Congress. And then because of this uh, civil uh, eco-civilization, eco-civilization, something like the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals in National uh, 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 United Nations uh, concept. So actually, uh, for example, uh, because eco-civilization and the SDG are quite, similar. So a lot of experts connect the concept of eco-civilization with the sustainable development goals. Then they promote a lot of, uh, uh, promote a lot of policies. Domestically, they use the term of eco-civilization, but uh, internationally, they use the term of uh, SDGs. So this, that's the strategy of the experts. This is because the uh, Chinese language and the international language are different. So this is uh, what I want to say.
And the uh, Bell Road Initiative, yes, uh, like uh, um, Minister of uh, Natural Resources and uh, uh, Environment, they have a coalition of uh, green development of the Bell Road Initiative. And also they, uh, every, every summit, uh, like Bell Road, Bell Road Initiative Summit, uh, last year is two, the first year is 2017, the second one is 2019, but uh, 2021 was suspended and it is, is supposed to, this summit was uh, is supposed to uh, held, to be held in maybe May in 2022, maybe uh, in spring or summer. Uh, they will release a lot of policy reports on green development of Bell Road initiatives. So we'll see. Uh, so a lot of experts uh, participated in this green development of BRI. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, um, Professor, Professor Zhu. Uh, we are now at 2.32, so we have run out of time. And let me thank you and thank everybody for this very thoughtful and uh, insightful webinars that we have. And please be assured that uh, for those of you who have raised questions that I have not managed to put to Professor Chu, your questions will be sent on to him. And I apologize for not being able to fit in your questions to him for an immediate response. And with that, let me just thank you all again and hope to see some of you at our regular webinar next week. Goodbye.